All right, Bears fans, what is up? My name is Adam Mason. I am an amateur at this, so bear with me. This is actually my first time recording myself doing a mock. It's going to be the first time I've done this, and I am just someone who loves the Bears. I study the draft like crazy. I look at players right now way in advance. We're two-thirds of the way through the NFL season, and I honestly am – an unrealistic Bears fan sometimes. I think things are turning the corner, and if we had a better offensive coordinator, we could really make a run at things. But as it stands now, I don't think we'll end up with the fourth overall pick. I think we'll end up with somewhere above the eighth overall pick. We're going to win a couple here. I think if we had anybody but Luke Getze, I think if Janoko, if Andrew Janoko was our offensive coordinator and can let Justin Fields play simple, and air it out a little bit more. I really think with our defense, we could make a run and win every game and be um, nine and eight and possibly make the playoffs if things fell right. And if you've done any simulators and if you've looked at how all the schedules lay out, that realistically could make the playoffs this year. But we'll see. That's not what we're going to focus on. This is going to be my first mock draft. I am going to do trades in it. We're going to attempt fate on this one. I'm I am in the mindset, just you know, of that group of Bears fans that wants to keep Justin Fields and wants to get Marvin Harrison Jr. But in this one, I'm going to attempt fate with our number one overall pick because Ryan Poles has been a genius. If anybody's job is not in jeopardy this year, I think it's Ryan Poles. What he's done with who he's drafted, and if you can see this defense coming together, and uh, Darnell Wright, and Braxton Jones, and... And Sweat and DJ Moore, what he's done to accumulate key players after Ryan Pace absolutely slaughtered our team is admirable. And I'm so grateful we have him. So, Ryan Poles, keep working your magic. I'm going to do a couple trade down scenarios here. Uh, hit our key positions I think we need, which are wide receiver and center and defensive end and safety and swing tackle. Tight end, backup tight end. Obviously, Cole commits amazing. Uh, but uh, there are some key pieces, I think, that we can pick up in free agency better. Like Connor Williams from the Dolphins, I think, would be an awesome center for us to pick up. Um, so I don't necessarily love some of the centers at the top of this draft. I don't think it's a particularly strong center class. I'm not in love with Cedric Van Pran like a lot of people are. Um, we will go through some of these players, but I'm just going to kick it off here. We're going to go with the Bears. We'll do four rounds just to get an idea of some of the key pieces we need. That'll get our main draft picks. And honestly, the top four or five rounds is where the players come from that end up being contributors anyways. We're going to go fast because we don't care what anybody else drafts. And these simulators aren't always realistic where players are placed anyways. Uh, they do a decent job, and we don't know either because we're still – half a year away from the draft. So this is really just hypothetical at this point. And I love it. I do way too many of these. Here we go. So with this one, we're not going to draft down to seven. We're going to try to keep in range of Marvin Harrison Jr. So we're going to try to go top three here. Hopefully the first two will pick Caleb Williams and Drake May. So we're going to reject that. We're going to reject 19. We're going to reject 11. We do two. That would be phenomenal. You can get 217, 34, 98. I would jump on that a heartbeat. But let's also look at how realistic that is. Let's look at let's look at our trade value chart. And for one to two, there's a 400 point difference. And 17 is worth 950 alone. 34 is worth 560. Uh, Who's worth 26 cents. Yeah, so, I mean, it's just not realistic. So we're not going to do this one. I'd love to do it because that would be awesome if we did it. If, if anything, they would maybe give us 2 and 34 at the most. But I don't see this one happening. So I'm going to push that one back to the bottom. We're going to reject that one. I'm going to reject 20. This is not unrealistic. Not unrealistic at all. 335 and 
3 is 2200, 35 is 550, so you can see that's 2750, and 67 would be 255. So that's right around 3000 plus we get a first next year and a second. So it's a little overpay, but that's pretty realistic for New England wanting to jump above anybody else trying to get first. It's not crazy overpay, but it is overpay to the point where it would make it worth it for the Bears. So we're going to accept this one, even though it's probably a little overpay, but it's it's realistic. It's within the realm of what could happen. We're going to accept that one. And just like we wanted, Caleb Williams went first, Drake May went second, and we can now go and get Marvin Harrison Jr. For awesome. This is how it panned out. That would be awesome. All right, so now at pick four, we've got our stud wide receiver to pair up with DJ Moore. We want more draft capital. 940 in a second. 1041 a second and a fifth. Or do we go all the way down? No, it's not worth it to go that far down. I like going down to nine. It's not too far out of the realm. Let me show the... So nine would be 1350. 40 would be 500. That's 1850. For number four is 1800 plus a kicker of second next year. That's pretty freaking realistic to what would happen in the draft. So we are going to accept this one. Watch some blue chip players go off the board. Olu would be nice to have, but no one's going to complain about Braxton. He's been a really solid base. He's getting stronger with his protection. I think everyone's happy with him. So Dallas Turner goes off the board. I think he's a little small for the Bears anyways. 45 pounds. I know there's it's pretty much what Yannick is, but I think we need some bigger, faster edges. The Atu Latu, I really like a lot. McNeighbors, Kulig McKinstry. <clears throat> All right, so there's some good options. In fact, Brock Bowers hasn't gone off the board. So our picks now, look what we've accumulated. We have 3, 9, 35, 40, 67, 100, and 128. So we've got a lot more draft capital. This is what Ryan Poles would do his type of MO. This is how he would handle it. So things are falling into place. Oh, Eon Coleman, too. These are my favorite, too. Malik Neighbors went off the board, I think. He did, but I like Keon Coleman more than Malik Neighbors. Malik Neighbors is wiry, and he can pluck anything out of anywhere, but Keon Coleman is long and lengthy. He's, he's the same. I mean, he's, he's phenomenal. So... Oof. We only have one tight end after this year with the expiring contracts, our elderly statesman. Brock Bowers, Keon Coleman, I like them both. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do something I didn't expect to do. I'm gonna do, and there's so many players. I would like to take Brock Bowers. I'd like to take Leatu Latu. I'd like to take Kitchen, Cameron Kitchens, um, safety. I'm gonna try to trade back up into the first round. Here in a little bit, we're going to take, take Brock Bowers just because we already took a receiver. And he's a generational tight end as well. Um, Kyle Pitts type of guy, but kind of, that's not really good to say anymore because Atlanta has done Kyle Pitts no justice. They use him as a decoy, which is ridiculous. He has so much potential and he's being wasted in Atlanta. But Brock Bowers, I mean, he's not Travis Kelsey, but Travis Kelsey wasn't Travis Kelsey until he became Travis Kelsey. He is, I mean, as close to you you can get to the guy tight end. So he and Cole Komet with two tight end lineups, uh, two tight end sets. Both of them can block extremely well. Both of them have great hands. We're going to take Brock Bowers. That's what we're going to do. He's going to fly fast. So we're going to stop here in the middle. We're going to look at 21. We're going to hope the Colts will trade up with us. And look at that. Cameron Kitchens is gone. Boo! I really like Cameron Kitchens a lot. And did we already lose the Atu Latu? We did not. And this is realistic. Leatu Latu may drop down to 21 because of his medical history. He's been playing awesome this year. He's completely healthy this year. I projected him to be a top 10 before the season started, before he's had his phenomenal year. I really liked him before the year started. Uh, if you don't believe me, look at some of the threads I've been on. And you can see my comments, but and look at some of my videos I've made. I just started making videos recently. So I appreciate you tuning in. 
Uh, probably should have said at the beginning, but if you don't mind, if you like my content, if you are getting something out of it, uh, hit the like button, subscribe to me. I'd love to have you in the future as I grow this thing. I really want to make something of it. Um, but Liatu Latu is there. He is John Coleman, still there too, and Roma Dunze. So, again, this is, and maybe this is how it goes. Sometimes this is how the draft goes. You never know what's going to happen, but Keon Coleman and Liatu Latu there. Heck yes, I would be trading up to go for either of those guys to the 21st. So right now we have 35th and 40th. We are going to try to do a trade. We have to overpay to get back into the first round. We're going to propose a trade to the Colts. We're going to give them 35 for 21. Look at our trade value. Here we go. Uh, all right, so our trade value, we got 21 is worth 800, and 35 is worth 550. So we're at 250 discrepancy, which is roughly 68.69, which we have. Give them 69 as well, and we have to overpay. We've got three second rounders next year because of what we've accumulated. I'm not going to sit here forever and try to force trades to work. Um, but at this point in the draft, to make that work. So this is basically e equal value here. 21 for 35 and 69. We're going to... We've got four next year. We're going to try to give them our third to go with it. We've got so many seconds, we can give them a second next year. But we're going to give them a third to go with it. hope that kicker worked. It was declined. Oh, because it's going fast. We lost our opportunity there. <laughs> He's not gone yet. All right. Amateur hour. We got amateur hour. All right, we're going to give it one more go. We're going to go with the Texans and try the same thing. Give them third. They accepted it. So a couple more picks down, a little more value for it. We got it. All right, so now... We can take Rome Dunze or Leatu Latu. I'm going to take Leatu Latu because we need the edge. He's bigger than Dallas Turner. I like him. He's one of my favorite players in this draft. 6'4, 265. I think he's going to be awesome. So we traded up into the first round. Got a third first round pick. We still have two first round picks next year. And we have four second round picks next year. <laughs> so I know sometimes these can seem a little unrealistic, but with the draft capital we have, this is not unrealistic. This is really what could happen to the Bears to set us up for the future. This is, I mean, this is, we're in dreamland, guys. All right, so now we here we are at pick 40. We're not going to get stuck into too many of these. We're gonna actually going to look at pay players, what we have available. Mason Smith is a great player. He's losing a little bit of his draft stock, but he's a solid defensive tackle. Um, very athletic as well. Michael Penix is there. That's ridiculous. I have him as a bad quarterback. But for the draft capital we have right now, we're going to try to utilize what we need. Tyler Newman. We missed out on... Um, Cameron Kitchens, Tyler Newbin is a great second option there at pick 40. That's pretty realistic where he's going to go. A lot of people may want me to take Cedric Van Pran right here, but I am not a huge Cedric Van Pran fan. So I'm going to go Tyler Newbin. I'm going to make him this thing. Again, we're not going to get stuck on trades. We're going to hide these. 
Who's our players so far? We've got Marvin Harrison Jr., Brock Bowers, Leatu Latu, and Tyler Newbin. We've still got our 67th, 100th, 123rd. Sorry, that one. Um, so we've got three picks left in the two, one in the third and two in the fourth. That's ours. And I see. Trading with the Patriots. Having traded our own way to trade up. But, so here we are. See who's available. Damian Sanders is a good tight end. I don't know if can get this one right here. Patrick Paul, if he's available at 67, absolutely think he'd be phenomenal to bring in to compete with. Braxton Jones. One of them are starter. One of them are swing tackle. Larry Bourne just isn't a high quality swing tackle. We've done decent, but really, if we want to step it up, that's what we need. We need a, a better tackle option and a better center. So, Patrick Paul, I'm going to take him here. If you look at any of my other content, go check out some of my other videos. I've got some stuff on him. A lot of potential with Patrick Paul. So, I'm going to take him. I don't think he'll last the 67. There he is. <clears throat> Kalen Bullock's never lasted the third round. Of the safety. So, I mean, some of these just aren't realistic. Kalen Bullock, 27th round. That's not going to happen. Ron Bullard is not going to last the third round. That's not going to happen. So, there's a lot of stuff with these simulators. And this is just my personal opinion. So, could be wrong. If Andre Sweat here would be phenomenal. Pick him up. This part of the draft. I like Cade Stover a lot. Converted uh, linebacker to tight end. His story is really cool. I have it in my other video as well. Um, I, I think he's a great prospect. Blake Corum. Pick up a running back here. So we're going to make it simple. We already got Brock Bowers. We're not going to go with another tight end. Uh, we do need another defensive tackle. Um, a rotational guy, third, fourth round is a perfect place to pick that up. I like Vondre Sweat. I also like Darius Robinson. So if you look at my other stuff, I don't even have anything on him. But I really like him. He can. He's a lot like Demarcus Walker, but I think more potential than Demarcus Walker. He can play on the edge. He can also bring come into the five tech or three tech. He can be that guy. He's not necessarily a dedicated three tech, but. He's got a, a motor. He keeps going. He just he's not got the natural talent and he's he's a little raw still. So I, I would love to take Darius Robinson. I think it's a little early for him. The other person I like that's never high enough on these is Brendan Rice. They've got him all the way at 184. I have to look at where some of the other ones have him. But they don't have him any higher. They all have him going to the fourth, fifth, sixth round. And he's having a phenomenal year for USC. That's uh, Jerry Rice's Hall of Famer, Jerry Rice's son. And he's having a phenomenal year this year. It's his breakout year. He's basically become the main receiver at USC when he was supposed to be the number three receiver. So I like Brennan Rice as well. Um, let's see who else is here. I don't know who went, but I didn't want to go at this point. Frazier. That might be where he goes, too. I like Zach Frazier a lot. As a developmental center, I really want us to sign a center. Uh, as I've said before, Connor Williams from Miami is my favorite. I really like Connor Williams a lot. I hope we sign him. We can get him for like $14 million a year, $15 I'm going to pay a little bit. And get a solid base for center. Fourteen. We can get him for $14 million a year and easily have the center for Three, four. I mean, young. So we have three, four, five year solid center, and that would that would make all the difference. I mean, that's really the biggest weakness we've had, and staying healthy at guard. So if we can shore up our middle, but nothing I can do about it here. He's already been taken. So we okay. Bryce Foster. Where's he at? I don't even know where they have him ranked on this one. Did he already go to? He might have already gone to. He's already gone as well. So me drafting a center is a no-go. 
on this mock draft. I botched getting a center, guys. Womp womp. Not the end of the world. Where did Bryce Foster go? Nothing that I'm in there. So in my scenario, we are hell or high water getting a center in free agency. All right, so with this, I am going to go dedicated interior defensive lineman with Tavondre Sweat. We're going to pick him. Darius Robinson went. There, I'm going to go Brennan Rice because it's such a need for us. I could go Devin Neal, running back. That's our need. We don't keep all of ours. I mean, everyone's under contract except Deonta Foreman. So if we don't resign him, if he goes somewhere else for more money, it'd be solid to have. How about? Roshan Johnson in that last game, huh? I was pumped, and I don't think a lot of people noticed it, but his blocking, as well as his receiving and his running, I mean, if we had a better play caller, that could have been his breakout game. He could have he could have had an elite night. So I was I was loving that. That was Cam Hart's a solid cornerback from Notre Dame, and it's a local guy. Maybe I should go Cam Hart, but I'm gonna go Brandon Rice because we have such a need wide receiver. Look into Brennan Rice if you don't know much about him. So we're going to do Brennan Rice. And there's our draft. So Marvin Harrison Jr., Brock Powers, Leatu Latu, Tyler Newbin, Patrick Paul, Tavondre Sweat, Brennan Rice. New England's first, New England's second, and the Chargers second. And you pair that up with our own first and second, as well as Carolina's second. So we got two first and four seconds. We gave up our third to trade up into the first round. But that's that's solid right there. Love it. I would be very happy with that draft. So here would be, I guess, officially mock draft 4.0 for me. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what you like, what you don't like. I appreciate you tuning in with me. Uh, if you liked it, please like the video. Please subscribe. And uh, hopefully you'll get to see some more of my content and I can keep doing this. I really appreciate any efforts that you have to check out my stuff. And until next time, thanks for tuning in.